Hey y'all, it is Sunday, and so I was like, this might be a good time to do a quick little chit chat. Um, so today is Sunday, the, it's, what is it, the third? No, maybe the second? Anyway, it's the Sunday before election day. <laughs> um, let's see, so I am... Um, I'm hanging out. I'm actually making dinner. I was going to make this Asian dish and I decided that, um, I'm not going to make the Asian dish. I'm just going to make the egg rolls and I'm making up the egg rolls. Um, so I, they're really just going to have, um, a cabbage mix and I think I'm going to put some cheese in them and some ground chicken and I'm just going to make as many of these egg rolls that I can. And so I thought it would be a good, a good place where... I thought it would be a good place to do a um, chit chat for a couple of minutes and just kind of talk about what I'm planning for the next week. Um, if you've been following my channel, welcome, welcome back and happy Sunday. Um, I'm Bikita. I am recently retired. I talked about in other videos submitting my letter of resignation, um, renegotiating to work part time to support um, some of our clients for the next couple of weeks. And in that part-time, um, in that part-time agreement, I would still maintain my, um, full-time salary. And so what that means is that I am only working a few hours every day, um, four, four hours every day. And my nose is running y'all. So in that time, um, working a few hours a day, <clears throat> I would still retain my salary. So um, somebody asked, how did I, how was I able to negotiate that? Um, and to not minimize what it is, because I'm a consultant, clients pay upfront for my firm's services. Um, so in your SOW or your statement of work, your contract, however you want to define it, um, they've agreed to paying our organization X amount of dollars for X amount of hours, X amount of resources to do X amount of, perform X amount of services. Because that money has already been negotiated on the front end, um, I am just billing time to what they agreed to. Um, Essentially, I am now splitting the hours that I bill um, to the external client and to my firm specifically. So my firm is going to pick up the bill for the other four, four hours of the day and the client's going to the, the four hours that I'm going to work. The client's going to pay for the time that I'm actually supporting them. And then my company is giving me, um, is paying me the other is paying for the four. So it's basically there. I'm still getting my full salary, but only doing a portion of the only working a portion of the day. I hope that makes sense. Um, because I'm still because I'm still employed. Um, maybe we can dig back into this in the next couple of weeks. But that's really how it would work. Um, so if you are consulting um, and you are salaried and you're considering leaving or renegotiating how you show up as a consultant, um, if there is uh, bench time that your company has, um, which is kind of the time that you are not actively supporting an external client, um, you may be able to leverage some of that bench time or those bench hours or that bench, um, the money that kind of sits there. Maybe you can use that time for training or whatever. Like it, it, it's a conversation that's worth having um, if it's something that you're interested in. And again, I wasn't, I wasn't really thinking about that kind of, um, you know, but let me work while I talk. I wasn't really thinking about doing that simply because I was, um, that wasn't that wasn't my goal, right? My goal was um, really just to to leave so that I could focus on um, <clears throat> so that I could focus on all the other things that I, you know, the endeavors that I have personally. Um, 
So I really didn't think about talking about working part time or <clears throat> anything like that. The other thing is once, you know, once that option was on the table, for a split second, I was thinking about, you know, I could do the part-time thing longer term, but that's not really what I want. That's not what I want at all. Um, so in furthering that conversation, where I did land is because um, because part of my services um, would still be doing the same work as part of Hayward and Love, our personal consultancy is, um, Kind of that business to business service offering of going in and helping them and um, uh, creating development services for your business or for your team my company would just if they needed and if they had work for a couple of hours or things like that they would just hire me back um hourly uh as a consultant um you know to do kind of whatever the work would be um and i would just be doing it you know, for a couple of hours versus long term. Um, I don't know if I will ever return to any place um, long term again. So I, I think that that idea, that model of kind of, you know, instead of leaving your employment um, full time, if that's not something that you're ready to do, renegotiating yourself back um, to see if, you know, part-time is an option and again this may only work if you're kind of working that consultant model um i'm trying to adjust my phone so that i can move around and y'all can still see me hold on it's shaking i'm sorry okay so but it could um it could definitely work if you're part of like that consultant model already um and if you're not and you're thinking that you might want to you know switch your kind of employment model that you're um you know from fte to maybe moving over to the consultant side right um i have been a career consultant um and i'm sorry if this feels a little rambly because i'm like i said i'm trying to make these um egg rolls y'all um, but anyway, I've been a career consultant for, darn it, I just broke my yoke and I didn't want to do that. Shoot. Y'all, I had to flush this whole egg. I forgot what I was doing. All right. <clears throat> um, I've been a career consultant for, I want to say the last, oh, With the exception of one year, um, I have been a consultant since 20, uh, 2014, 2013, 2014, I've been a consultant for that long. Um, the reason is, is because I just, I did not enjoy uh, the full-time, uh, the full-time work model. Um, and I just don't, I don't want to be part of someone's organization for consulting works for me. Um, I really wanted to be able to package up the information that I had and be able to share that information, support an initiative, and then move on and just, you know, go live my life. I, I've just never enjoyed, like, even as a Gen Xer, I have never been part of the long term, you get hired at one company and you you die there or you retire there or some variation of the two. Like I've never, I've never, and I don't, to me, that's not how you grow professionally. Um, staying in one place for the duration of your professional lifetime, to me has no real benefit or value unless the trajectory that you're on professionally is in that one company or that one organization and it makes sense for you it didn't make sense for me so um contracting initially and then consulting um was the sensible part of how i wanted to navigate my career hold on so 
So that's what worked for me and that's what I did. Um, but I totally feel like if, if it's, if it's if it's important to you, if it's worth it to you to ask those questions and to you know try and pursue those options, I highly recommend that you do it. Um, ah, like making a total mess. It's definitely not my normal amount. Um, but yeah, so that's how I was able to how I was able to do that. Um, and again. It was not part of the plan for me. So the reason that I was surprised when it happened was because that's not what I was looking for. Um, and I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to it because I, I agreed to it. Um, I was fine with... Um, putting myself in a position to be able to support, you know, my company as they you know, had to find a replacement for me or um, supporting them just kind of getting this client kind of in the next phase of their project and then figuring out how they were going to move forward. I didn't have a problem with any of that, um, again, because I'm not, I'm not exiting for something negative. Um, and I really, I, didn't necessarily have a timeline in mind, so to speak. I just wanted to, I knew I needed to make a decision. Once I decided that I was going to do this, um, and once I finally kind of landed on the, opportun the opportunity, um, and by opportunity, I mean the moment to just say, this is what I'm gonna do and I'm, I'm really gonna do it. I didn't want to keep going back and forth with myself, you know, um, like I said, I had been really kind of trying to figure this out for the last, maybe last year and a half almost. I was already struggling with the idea of when to leave my job. One, because I just enjoy, I enjoy the work that I do so much so that I am, it is a service that I offer. Um, so I will continue in this vein of doing the work that I do because I really do enjoy the work that I do. Um, I, I just did not want to keep going back and forth with the decision. And I really started to feel like unless I pull the trigger, um, and by pull the trigger, I mean, unless I finally just made a very firm decision and gave myself a very hard date, if I did not, do those things, if I didn't activate immediately, I would just find reasons to drag this out. Um, and that, that was not the plan. That was never the plan. Um, I knew I wanted to exit the traditional, um, exit the traditional job market in a sense. Um, by the time I was 50, I knew that that was, you know, a plan of mine. I knew that it was a dream of mine to be able to do that. And I just didn't want to I don't want to waste any more time. And I think the, the lesson in that part of this process for me is if you really don't trust yourself to kind of take the leap of faith, then what, what is the faith for, right? What, what is the faith part? Why does it, where does the value in that? Um, I feel like if there's no risk, there's no reward. Um, and I know, um, I, I, I do what I do extremely well. I, I, I don't doubt it. Um, people have paid me to do it and I've made a significant amount of money in my career um, doing what I do. Um, I am, this is my zone of brilliance. Um, I am very good at helping people organize, um, see the big picture, work through the obstacles and then create something or create a blueprint to accomplishing that thing. Um, helping people become innovative and see their potential and the possibilities in that, it is what I do. Um, I, I'm, I'm a big proponent on understanding your spiritual gifts and how they are represented naturally. Um, mine is exhortation and administration. Um, and so I am organizationally competent um, 
And I just, I, I believe in people's dreams and I believe in people being able to accomplish them. And so I, I can see techniques and strategies for you to be able to do that. And so I absolutely enjoy what I do. Um, and because of that, I did not want to continue. Really, the question for me was becoming like, what are we waiting for? What, we, what are we waiting for? There was no reason. <laughs> there was really no reason. Um, to kind of delay it any further. Yes, I could stay in my role and make more money and, you know, put more, you know, as a security blanket and, and all of those things, I can continue to do it. But that eventually just lulls me to sleep. You know, that that eventually for me, and I'm not saying this is for you, but for me, the the um the familiarity and the the comfort in the the normalcy of, you know, I, my body wakes up at a certain time every day. I have a morning routine that is all focused on me getting ready for work. The consistency of that eventually would just lull me to sleep. And I would never, um, I would never seize this moment. I would never confront this opportunity. I would never try and pursue beyond what I've already accomplished. And I just don't feel like that, I just do not feel like that is, um, that was the right thing for me to do. That's not the right approach. Um, I believe completely um, that I'm absolutely doing the right thing. Um, and like I said before, I am writing this narrative, writing this story as I go, right? So. What will it look like? I really don't know what it will look like. Um, I'm defining, I'm writing the playbook as I walk it out. So that's kind of where it is. And that, that, is, that is both exhilarating and terrifying um, all at the same time. So that's just kind of where things are. Um, I'm super excited about it. Um, you know, I just, I don't know. This is going to be choppy because I'm doing it on my phone. I'm probably not going to even attempt to edit it. Or maybe I'll try to cut out some of the times when I'm out of frame. But, but you know, I'm excited. Um, I have a couple of disciplines under my belt. Um, I'm a, I've probably said this before that I'm a certified career development and an organizational coach, right? So I, I think in the, for the most part, career coaching and, and life coaching and things like that, we all learn the same, we all learn the same kind of framework um, and then branch off into various disciplines and things like that. Um, One of the things when I did career coaching and had career clients, um, I would always remind them um, that their biggest, their biggest strength and their biggest advocate um, and the biggest weakness um, and the biggest threat to their progress is what they believe about themselves. If you believe that you are capable and you are confident in your ability, Pushing forward is not, it's not going to be difficult. Even in the face of fear and uncertainty, you're still going to be okay because you have some sort of belief in your ability to fly. Um, and then coupled with the other things that support your belief system, your, the people around you, your faith, um, you know, your education, whatever it is that supports the confidence that you have coupled together, it really helps you move forward. But on the flip side of that, if you don't believe that you are capable of winning the same religion, the same education, the same network, your family structure, all of those things that would support you to be great, will, if you believe you're going to fail, will support you to fail. The point is, if you've got a lot of people that are being negative and saying, you know, this is just, 
it's a stupid move. Small businesses are failing. You should never just leave a good job and not have a plan in place. You're just leaving a good job for no reason. That's crazy. Um, it's not going to work. And if there is a shadow of doubt, I promise you, it's not going to work. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, my my husband's home and my daughter's on the phone. And, and we have the dog this weekend, so all that craziness just came out into the kitchen. Um, but what I was saying was, if there's a little bit of doubt in you, then all of those other things are immediately justified. But if there is not any doubt in you and you have checked in with God or you have checked in and whatever it is, right, and that confidence is there, then even if there is some external doubt, your internal confidence is enough to support and to keep you moving forward. That's kind of where I am right now. Um, thankfully, I am, I, I am not surrounded by people that are, um, you know, not in support of what I am just, you know, the decisions that I've made. But even if, if, I don't know, I don't think I would be around people like that anyway, but you know, that's another thought for another time. Anyway, I don't want this to go on too long. Um, I'm already rambling enough. Um, definitely if, if consulting is something that you think that you are interested in, there are definitely some benefits, not some, there are a lot of benefits to consulting and not working full time. And let me just tell you, um, before I go, the idea that, um, consulting is not stable or whatever, like, is any job stable at this point in time? Um, I, I think that consulting and contracting, I don't, although I don't know how many people contract too much, um, but consulting and contracting, um, to me has been very stable. Again, I've been doing it since 2014, with the exception of a year that I thought I wanted to convert and that, it's not my thing. But listen, um, don't let anybody talk you out of, you know, Oh my God, y'all. So I'm going to wrap this up because I don't know if you just heard the dog scream. My husband was coming out of the laundry room and scared her and she screamed like at the top of her lungs. And now I don't even know what I was, I don't even know what I was talking about. So that means that I'm done talking. Um, anyway. Uh, so let's see. I think my final thought for this video is I think I was talking about, um, consulting and contracting um i i yeah so if anybody cares about that and if you're interested and you're not sure about it and you have questions about it definitely ask me the questions and i will be more than happy um to share uh my thoughts on transitioning from your full-time role um uh your traditional full-time role um into a consultant contractor type role um, because if you're looking for some, maybe some, you know, additional freedoms and the pay is different. Um, the pay is definitely different when you are um, consulting for sure. Uh, because you are paid based on the different contracts. Um, you could be paid. I, I'll say you could be instead of saying that you are. Because different firms will do different things but based on the different contracts that your firm acquires um and the projects that are related to those different projects yes and the projects that are related to those different contracts um you could be paid several thousands of dollars above what you are making with your traditional company and that um there are a lot of things that you know go into you know what that overall um, payment structure looks like pay structure looks like so I don't want to talk about it in this video um, just because anyway I'm gonna get back to sorry that this video felt a little scatterbrained because I just decided that I would do some cooking and talk so anyway I'll show you really quick what I am making this is my it, it's really a lot but there are a lot of 
my thought is that I could roll a bunch of these egg rolls, make some for dinner tonight. I think we're just gonna have the egg rolls for dinner tonight because they have the cabbage and they have ground chicken. And then I added some cheese. Um, and they're these things, which they have these in the grocery stores, any grocery store in the produce section. Um, but I figured I could make a bunch, freeze some of them, and then we could eat some of them. Um, but anyway, that's what I'm doing right now. And I thought it would be a great idea to kind of chop it up and make these egg rolls. But anyway, um, if you want to know more about the consulting, contracting, life cycle, jumping into that, what the transition would look like from your full-time job into, you know, working for, uh, maybe a staffing house, if you're interested, just let me know. Um, other than that, yeah, y'all have a great week. I definitely will probably do a couple of more, a couple more conversations um, throughout the week. Um, I definitely still want to um, just kind of chronicle, you know, what this experience looks like. I don't know, I don't know what that will look like, but but that's the goal anyway. Um, again, you know the confidence in yourself or the doubt in yourself however you respond to fear it is going to manifest and, and take on a life of its own so if you know you can you can and you can and you will and that's just all that is up and leave it take a lot of courage just to live out your dreams bigger picture i could see if i just close my eyes the foresight to believe time don't move backwards it speeds to the future fearlessly charging forward when i open my mouth though i may not know how i know i was born to sing travel the world please baby Hey y'all, what's up? So today is um, today is the Wednesday after election day. Uh, I never got around to finishing recording from Sunday night. So all of that is gonna be in the same video. Um, like I said, it's the Wednesday after election day. Um, elect I, let me just say, I hate, hate. I don't care if it is the national or if it's on the local level, I cannot stand um election season i i hate the i hate the energy shift that happens with just how contentious elections are in the united states it is just and i'm sure elections are like that in many places but anyway i'm glad the elections are over um by now if you don't know um well by now you should know who won and who didn't win and you know the outcomes of your your local and your state elections and all of that and so i'm i'm hoping we can just 
get back to some semblance of normalcy. Like I haven't watched the TV today. Well, I haven't watched anything like current. I've been watching like, and not even watching old Law & Order reruns. I love Law & Order. I love the entire Law & Order universe with the exception of um, the one Criminal Minds. I don't, that one's kind of weird to me. But the rest of them <laughs> and the original Law & Order, I love the very old like 80s episodes. I just think they're so good. Um, and so normally when I'm working, I will let kind of Law & Order or Dateline, I'm very much so becoming my mother. Um, Give me a good crime drama, honey, and I am just as happy as I can be. Um, but I'll usually let those play in the background in the office. So I'm not necessarily watching for context, but I'm hearing it in the background. And I don't know. It just, I, I enjoy it. That's my thing. Um, anyway, I just walked to the mailbox. I don't normally, normally whoever is coming home will bring home the mail. And I just felt like I needed to get out of the house. And it's actually a beautiful day. This morning was kind of foggy and stuff, but it has kind of evolved into a very pretty day outside, a very uh, mild fall day. Um, very pretty. So getting out, walking, just to be able to clear my head just was nice. So I bought some frames from Zelo with my own money. It's not sponsored. But since I got the box, I'm going to go ahead and open them. I have actually bought a couple of um, frames from them. Uh, my daughter started it. <laughs> she bought me a pair of readers. Um, and then I just I just like it. I like being able to change my glasses um, when I don't want to wear my contacts. I like being able to switch it up. I feel like my glasses are a part of my outfit of the day. Um, I feel like a pair of cute glasses and some hoop earrings just elevates your mood completely. So I'm gonna open my glasses. Y'all tell me what you think. Um, these were on sale too. They were like $7 frames. I do have my prescription, so I put my prescription in. So inside of this box, I got a, a free gift, which was this glasses holder. <sighs> Let me open it up and see what it looks like. Because in this package, it is not cute. Um. Oh, it's like a like a woven style. It's it's kind of cute. It's like a leathery uh, thing, leather esque faux vegan leather, whatever the phrase is now. With this little black strap. I mean, I guess it's cute. Um, I don't know how protective it is going to be because it's pretty pretty flexible anyway. But they send you the um, so they send you a couple of things. So they sent me back my prescription, which is great. Um, and now all of the kind of measurements and everything from their site are on this. So that's cool. Um, each pair of your glasses comes in this little dust-free pouch, which I like. Um, they sent me a coupon. And then these little, this little eye ruler measures the distance of your pupil because you'll need that when you order your glasses online. However, my daughter has an app and she did the app thing for me and that was perfect. So we about to see if it worked. Oh, so I have two of these. These are really good. Um, these are like the lint free uh, cloths to clean your glasses. Um, but these are also great as jewelry cleaners as well. Too. So just, just an FYI. All right, so this first pair I bought, I thought was kind of fun. I don't normally wear really colorful things. If you've watched my videos, you know I am pretty basic when it comes to colors. I am black, white, denim, uh, maybe a taupey grayish. I don't do too many things. Um, but so this color is fun. I saw it online. I saw the, it looks more reddish, but it's giving, it's giving orangey. I don't know. I don't even have a mirror, but ooh, ah, oh, um, let me see. I don't have a mirror out here. I could go get one. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I grabbed my mirror. <gasps> ooh, I like these. Oh, this is such a fun color. Very out of character for me, but definitely like. Okay, so let's let's check out my other pair, which is normally who I am. Um, oh, but these are cute. They have these little, 
So I didn't know about the little decal on the arm. I think that's cute. That's fun. It's a little something, something. All right. Um, oh, and these are plain. I like because, okay, so I have, um, I have, I had like some older frames that I had, they were like the clear, um, kind of white, clear acrylic E look. I didn't really, I feel like I liked them for a minute and I didn't get those from Zelo. I got those from my eye doctor. I feel like I liked them for a minute. And then after a while, I, I felt like they aged me. I don't know. I just feel like that. I don't know. I felt like they aged me anyway. I didn't like those. I like this. This is supposed to be a gray color, but it's giving, it's giving a little blue grayish almost. I, I don't know. Purpley, maybe a, I don't know. But on the site, this is, these are gray. So I kind of like these. And I also like the little cat eye detail on the side. Um, yeah, like those very much so. These are also um, from Zelo. Okay, so let me see if they gave me what the glasses are. Hmm, they didn't give me the name. Um, let me see. No, they didn't, um, they, they didn't give me the, the name. So all of their glasses have like a name on the website. Um, I also think because I have shopped with them before, they actually gave me a coupon code. Um, I need to find it. I think I'm going to have to like log in and get it, but I, <laughs> Ooh, yeah. so if you're interested in shopping with them i will one see if i have a coupon code i'll put it in the description and i'll also put the name of the frames that i bought um i like them i really like these these are fun these are what y'all tell me what y'all think um, again, I, I know nobody's going to care about these because they're pretty basic, but I'm pretty, you know, fancy for me as a leopard print. So, um, but again, I do like kind of the subtle cat eye and these are not really round. I don't know if you can tell, Maybe I'll use that. but if you could tell, like, these aren't really like round, they're kind of angled. Um, angled on the side, which I think is a cute little detail that I didn't know um, was there. And then these, like, this is like a zipper or something. I don't know, but I think that's cute. Um, I'm gonna keep these on, I like it. Um, okay, so that's enough for my glasses. But yeah, I'll leave, if I have a coupon code, I will definitely put it in the description. And then I will leave the names to the glasses that I have. Um, also like my green, chunky square frames. Um, those are from Zelo also. And then I have a couple of readers from when I wear, um, when I wear my contact lenses. Okay. So the last thing I want to talk about is a quick, uh, business update. Um, I have, um, so I told you that we, I started working with a marketing group. And so we talked through, um, I've gone through like setting up Facebook ads the right way. So I finally did that last night. I'm very, very, very excited. I thought I had to have a Facebook shop in order to do my uh, meta ads. <sighs> you don't have to do that. And I'm very happy that I don't have to do that because I don't enjoy Facebook shop because uh, maybe a year or two ago, um, we had a Facebook shop and people were, people were ordering via the Facebook shop but my website was never getting the orders and I wasn't getting Facebook notifications. So I just, I don't want to do Facebook shop. Um, and the other thing is I, I don't like Facebook. Like I don't want to be on Facebook ever. Um, Facebook ads, is like a separate entity. So I can do that in the meta business center. I can set up the ads and then I don't really need to interact. Um, my shop page, if you will, the Hayward and Love page on Facebook, you know, I will auto post from Instagram, but I am primarily, um, I do more than anything on Instagram, um, or my Pinterest page. I just, I don't like Facebook. 
I'm not on X, uh, you know, formerly known as Twitter. I don't do any of those things. I don't enjoy it. Um, so anyway, finally was able to set up Facebook ads. Very excited. Um, the ad started running um, late last night, probably, I don't know, maybe eight o'clock almost nine o'clock because it took me a minute to like get it going. Um, but now that the ad is up, I'm very excited to see kind of the ad performance. Um, I did look at my site analytics. And so um, my immediate goal for the site was to have traffic um, of about 250 hits um, minimum a month. Um, and again, because I was so focused on pop-ups, we weren't getting any traffic to our website um, in the last couple of years. And so I have, I'm at like 208 um, at, at the kind of minimum threshold, which for me is very exciting. Um, so we do have a couple of pop-ups coming up. It is the holiday season. So I try to, you know, and I've said this, I'll be doing a couple holiday markets, but there'll definitely be markets that I enjoy and not like the big behemoth markets kind of thing. Um, so I think that's all from a business update from a transitioning from my nine to five. Um, that transition is still happening. Um, my last day will be next Friday. Um, I'm, I am really excited. I'm really excited. Um, I've been just diligently trying to work on things so that there is a really smooth handoff for me kind of fully immersing myself in Hayward and Love and kind of rolling off those other expectations. So I, those are really all my updates. Um, I did talk about Sunday, just kind of, um, you know, being a consultant, being a contractor, um, being able to kind of negotiate part time or, you know, just billing uh, hours against um, an SOW or something like that, depending on, you know, what the setup is. Um, and then, you know, bench time, whether or not you get paid for it, things like that. Um, so again, if you're interested in like becoming a consultant, then there's some specific questions that you have. Because, you know, I could start talking about being a consultant and, and how all of those things work. But if you've never done it, it could almost just sound like, what, what is she even talking about? And so I definitely don't want it to become like something weird like that. Like, like I'm just saying, I'm just making up words. Because, you know, people do that. And I can't stand when people do that. So I don't want to be what I can't stand. <laughs> um, but so if you have, like, specific questions, definitely, like, ask them in the comments or whatever. Ask um, them and then I can. It's easier for me to answer specific questions about consulting and things like that than it is for me to just kind of bombard you with a lot of what could feel like useless information if, if it doesn't make any sense. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Oh, and here, so I will say this about the election. I don't really care how you voted, what you feel, all of that. But today, um, you know, and, you know, the next coming days, right? The full transition is not going to happen until January. And so my encouragement, um, my encouragement to anybody that is really feeling super overwhelmed I highly encourage you to, um, my daughter always says when things are just feeling very stressful to her, she says, you know, mom, I'm disengaging. Um, that has become like her new mantra. I will share that with you. I highly encourage you to disengage. Whatever disengaging looks like for you, I highly encourage you to do it. Um, the world can be a very crazy, contentious place. Um, and consuming all of the, the vitriol, all of the commentary, all of the dialogue, all the back and forth, it can just be so much. Like to me, it's not that serious for families to be falling out with each other and not talking to each other over politics. Um, and politics and religion are not the same thing. Politics are not your faith, your relationship with, you know, with with God, with Jesus Christ, with whomever, whatever it is that you believe in, um, your relationship and that is not your civic responsibility and civic accountability when it comes to the elections, right? So keep your safe spaces, safe spaces and not allow all the other things to 
kind of poke holes and penetrate that. Disengage if you need to. Um, I don't want to have public conversations about politics. Um, I will share my faith when I feel like sharing my faith in conversations where it is um, where it is meaningful and it can encourage or inspire someone. I, I just don't understand that everybody, I want to beat you up because you don't agree with me because you don't do it like I do it. That is what makes us all beautiful and unique in our own rights. Um, so disengage if you need to. Definitely make sure that you are taking care of your mental and your emotional and your spiritual health especially over the next couple of days. We're getting ready to go into the holiday season. And that really should just be a time that you are able to enjoy. And I, I get that holidays are also triggering for people. Um, and then there is seasonal depression. And there are all of these things that are actively working against our mental and emotional health. And so just take care of yourself. That's, that is my, my biggest um, that is, that is the best piece of advice and information that I can offer to anybody is just make sure that you are taking care of yourself, feel and experience whatever you need to feel and experience, um, say no as much and as often as you need to, and you don't really need to add anything additional to your no, um, but by all means, do the right thing, be honorable to yourself, make sure that you are okay because there's just so much, there's just, there's just so much. So um, I'm going to like for real end this week, um, end this vlog here, not this vlog, but just end this kind of teachable moment here. Um, I thought I was going to post this earlier in the week. <sighs> maybe it'll get out today. Maybe it'll get out tomorrow. I don't know, but I, I'm going to go work on it right now. Um, yeah. And then I will talk to y'all um, for sure next week, but maybe I'll pop up in some other short form. Like I don't know, but have an amazing week. Um, thank you for, uh, your comments, your likes, um, your watches, even if they're a flicker and a scroll away, it doesn't matter. I appreciate it. Bye.